And now for something completely different. Guys, a little while ago, if you remember, I posted a quick picture on the little community post thingy here on YouTube with a box. This box and the contents of that box, no, it's not really Gwyneth Paltrow's head, is two brand new unopened backdrops from the good folks over at Kate Backdrops. If you shoot portraits, if you're interested in uh, starting up your own home studio like I have here, Please, you're gonna to wanna to see this, but I'm gonna to lie to you. If not, if you have no interest in setting up a home studio, portraits, anything like that, that would necessitate a backdrop, well, you're probably not gonna watch this video. That being said, I wanted to actually open these things up, explore them with you for the first time, uh, talk a little bit how I'm gonna to try to hang them up on my roller system, and then we're just gonna go from there, test them out, take a few pictures, you know the whole drill. So. Uh, let's just go ahead and get down to this. If you are familiar at all with Kate Backdrops, you will know they produce a lot of very budget-friendly, hyper-budget-friendly backdrops, if I could be so bold to say. They are geared towards professional and novice, hobbyist portrait shooters alike. They make them out of, the majority of them anyway, are made out of this micro fiber cloth. It's almost like a real heavy chamois or a real heavy lens cloth. They have sent me two. Uh, they are both 240 by 430 centimeters. I think they're that's 8 by 14 feet. Believe it or not, this place is bigger than it looks. I have a big roller system and I needed a big backdrop to let it go all the way down for full body length portraits. So like I said, they were good enough to send me two for a review. I opted for the sleeved version. You can get them sleeved or unsleeved. This is made to be put on a hang bar or like I'm doing on a roller. You don't need a bar. Well, you probably need a bar, but uh, definitely not a roller system. You can just clip these up. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But overall, just taking them out. They're very lightweight. You could just throw them in a the bag, the back of your car or something. If I'm not mistaken, I have the kind of a golden brown color. I'll put them in the description for sure. And then this one here, that's uh, kind of a bluish yellow type thing. I wanted something that had a lot of versatility. So I wanted something to add a little bit of color, but of course had the texture too. So it would look good black and white. I'm gonna do some of those as well. All right, enough of that. I'm gonna take these out of the bag, work on getting them hung up so we can look at them just a little bit better. Okay guys, what I'm going to do, uh, so far I've taken down the seamless white paper from off of the uh, hanger here. That's what you see. And I have measured I have uh, these two big 10 foot pieces of PVC pipe, one and a half inch diameter. I measured them off to be the same length as that roll of paper because that's what I have everything measured for. But I've ran in to a small problem, but I think I have a very elegant solution for it. I'm not going to go into exactly how the my three roller system works. It's that surprisingly nice, but El Cheapo Fodia Deox three roller. Long story short, uh, these little end pieces that have the pulley system attached, they go into the roll. You twist this and these little things expand against the roll and that's how you hang your paper or your backdrop or whatever. But the problem is, um, I just eyeballed it. This does not, the end of that is not going to go into that one and a half inch PVC. Now, you know, the solution you would think would be just get a slightly bigger diameter pipe. But the problem there is the sleeve on the backdrops fits this one perfectly. So if I get a bigger roll, I can't put it inside the backdrop, the sleeve on the backdrop. And if I get a smaller one, uh, it's not definitely not going to fit on the rollers. Now, I want to point out, and I want to show you this, that you can just hang these backdrops up. That's the cool thing about this fabric. You can just hang them up with like little clips kind of like that. Don't necessarily need a rod even going through there. You can just clip them up, tape them up, whatever you need to do. But since it's me and since we're here, I want to at least attempt to get these things on the roller system. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, let me show you how I think I'm gonna do that.
Well, we gave it our best shot. We gave it the old college try. My elegant solution, as it were, didn't work. It didn't work at all. What I had planned on doing was after I cut the PVC pipe down to length, was to split each side opposite each other uh, about six inches and then spread it apart, put the roller holder into that. Just didn't work, the pipe's too thick. Every time I would push it in there, the pipe itself kept expanding out so the holder didn't have anything to expand and latch onto. So that didn't work, no worries. Uh, I ran down to Lowe's real fast. Got a standard issue, one inch uh, diameter, 10 foot galvanized steel pipe. I was gonna get two and then I got to thinking, I'm like, Adam, you know, instead of just putting one of the backdrops on a single pipe each and staggering them on the holder, well, let's just, they're basically curtains, big, big curtains. So let's just uh, put the backdrops on one side, uh, one side each, and that works beautifully. I'm gonna walk around here with you and show you exactly what I'm talking about, exactly how it worked, and uh, talk a little bit about some of the things I've learned about these backdrops so far that I think is really, really, really gonna help you out if you go the Kate backdrop route. So let's just take a look at these backdrops real fast. The first one here is what I believe Kate calls the rusty iron. You see what I was talking about? There's a little bit of a wrinkling issue in this microfiber cloth, and this is microfiber cloth. Uh, put it in the dryer for a while, I got a lot of the wrinkles out. If I had a smaller backdrop, this wasn't so big. Again, this is eight by 14 feet. It would be a lot more easy to iron. It's not a big deal, I don't think, especially since you'll be shooting primarily wider apertures and have a lot of separation from your subject to the backdrop, but it is there. This is the backside. You can see that sleeve. On the larger backdrops, that sleeve is 10 centimeters, I believe they said, and it's five centimeters on the smaller. Support for Kate backdrops right there. The back of this, it's hard to tell. Go back around the front. This is of course the front of the backdrop. That's the back. So it's very white or almost white. So just to reiterate, this is their rusty iron. And all I have to do to change this out, slide this over like a curtain. Gather up the excess. I wanted it extra big. Like I said, I thought I was gonna have it on the roller so I could control that. But since I had it on the this galvanized piece of pipe, it's a little bit longer, but definitely doable. You just never know when you need a lot more backdrop. Got this one cinched up. This is their iron, or excuse me, not the iron, their brown oil painting. This one had a lot fewer wrinkles than the other one. I love the richness of these. They're painted uh, on Kate's website. Kate Backdrop's website, it calls computer painted. I don't really know exactly what that means, but uh, if you've ever imagined this uh, suede velour couch feeling, that's what these feel like. They are microfiber. One thing to watch out for, I've noticed as well, speaking of like a suede couch, you can get lines from your hand. So definitely before you use these, either brush them off, which you probably have a lint roller with you anyway, if you're a portrait shooter, definitely just run over that 
to get a little bit of those streaks out of there. Overall, extremely impressed with the stitching. The cool thing about these, according to Kate Backdrop's website, is you can get these in any custom size. Uh, no extra charge. Thought that was pretty cool. Get them with or without the sleeve. So depending on your needs, you can really customize these. And again, no extra charge. I really like that. All right, so let's get down to business and actually make some pictures using these new Kate backdrops here. It's been extremely hot lately, and as you know, this whole COVID thing has slowed things <laughs> yeah, down a know, bit. Right? Well, so it's been extremely it? hard to <laughs> know, find right? any models willing yeah. to come into the studio <laughs> to actually make some <laughs> yeah, pictures. Know, right? But Who were you there? It's 2001. Oh man, yeah. I mean, Amsterdam was just a bunch of beer and prostitutes. But I mean, hey, hey, what are you doing? Just talking. To who? Oh. With the same person. Hey, you want to make three dollars? All right. Oh no 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 no! Just a few quick pictures with the new backdrop stuff. Show these nice folks here. Oh yeah, sure. All right, good. Before we leave here, folks, I want to really quick go over some of the pictures that you saw here in the video, talk a little bit about how I went about doing them, and then give you my final thoughts on these backdrops from Kate Backdrops. Now, as we go along here, folks, just look right up here at the left top corner. You can see which lens I was using. I use either a 24 millimeter Sigma F14 Art or a Canon 50 millimeter F14. Um, both of these were on my Sony A7R Mark III. And if you're interested in the settings here, if I don't mention it, just check right there and you'll kind of know where we are. So this first picture was done with that brown oil painting backdrop. All the lighting for these guys was extremely straightforward and simple. I have one 18 inch softbox just above my head here and ever so slightly forward. The back lighting here is actually done by another 18 inch softbox behind the backdrop itself. And those microfibers work extremely well for this because they are more or less translucent to a lot of light so you can do some really cool stuff with backlighting. Here's an actual video of the setup I had for this. You can see that softbox set up up top. I ended up standing, I don't know, about a foot and a half, two feet forward from the backdrop and then of course we had that light, that softbox set up directly behind there. All that was done in camera. I have a very similar lighting setup. Well, this one here, this is, believe it or not, still that brown oil painting. If I go to a side-by-side -side here, just so you can have a look, you'll notice here on this one on the right, very subdued as far as color of the backdrop compared to the one on the left. I pulled this off by using a, a an extremely warm bulb in the softbox that I had set up about here to my 45 degree at the right. And then that allowed me to really desaturate the entire image here, uh, especially in the background on the backdrop, and not lose, not really wash out my skin tone here. If I'd used a white light here, the white balance would have just been way too funky to deal with. So it really helped me out having that warm bulb. I was using the same lens, that 24 millimeter F14 Art from Sigma. The light, I think I said, was just over here to my my right kept the same 18 inch softbox behind the backdrop 
really, really like doing that with those vinyl, really thick stuff. You can't do that too much. Even with paper, it kind of gets tricky. You can get hot spots, but these work beautifully, and I was really, really glad to see that. Moving on to our next one here, not exactly a portrait, guys, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the folds and what you're seeing here in the background. I switched to that rusty iron, that kind of blue gold one that I was talking about. You can see these, these little lines here, those aren't actually the folds that we saw from the shipping. Those are actually because I had a fan, big fan, going full blast in front of me because it was so incredibly hot out there guys I was dying as you could see that is caused by the backdrop itself literally blowing in the breeze from that fan these are very lightweight something you have to watch out for there if you don't have them pulled extremely taut and you have any wind blowing or any kind of fan going such as I did here you're going to get a little bit of motion in that backdrop of course I could just turn the fan off long enough to get the shot and it would have been fine but definitely something you want to keep out for, but, uh, watch out for because even though these are very lightweight, very portable, very easy to use, that does make them a little prone to the random breeze going by. So just keep an eye out for that when you're shooting on location or in your studio. Keeping with this same rusty iron, I mentioned earlier in the video that I wanted that specifically to use for color and black and white, just for that abstract texture in there. I think it worked out really well on this one. Same backdrop. The only lighting I have set up here is a 18 inch soft box right up here to my right. I don't know, maybe 35 degrees off to my right here. And that is it. This is a single light portrait. The backdrop is illuminated just by that single light over here to my right. Nothing behind it, nothing in front of it, no key lights or anything like that. I went in post and really cooled down the white balance so the photo looked almost blue then I converted to black and white went into my HSL panel and pumped up the blues almost a hundred percent and it gives you kind of an old timey some old wet plate maybe a tin type type feel to the photograph I think it works great with this one you might not like it but I really like that shallow depth of field and that backdrop that abstract texture in it works great for black and white I use the same backdrop for these next three pictures, this is what uh, we use to make that triptych that we looked at at the very beginning here, and we're going to look at again at the end. These are kind of Martin Schroeder-esque, if you're familiar with his work. I wanted extremely high key illumination at the front, and then, again, nothing on the backdrop itself. I'm going to try to find... Isn't that fun? I think you can really see the... Yeah, the lights here in my eyes kind of gives a giveaway of the lighting setup here. Two 18-inch soft boxes set up as best as I could to be exactly uh, even to my left and to my right. You can see them there in the reflection. And then I set up another soft box, 18-inch, just above my head here and a little bit forward. Again, no actual lights on the backdrop itself. All that's coming more or less from the front and any kind of lighting you're seeing on the backdrop is just fall off from those three lights. This was actually a little bit brighter. I darkened it up with some graduated filters and post to really bring out the emphasis on my face, as scary as that is. So you can make these, especially if you use the HSL panel, things like that, and depending on how much you want to work in post, you can really manipulate the colors and the tones of those backdrops considerably. Overall, guys, just a few things to watch out for. Uh, first of all, I love these backdrops. I don't think there's a reason to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on your backdrops. Truthfully, I know there's some situations where you might have something extremely high end and you're more comfortable using that. But I think for most folks, you can really get away with very little and produce some fairly substantial results. Kate backdrops so far, they've been excellent to deal with. You can get a lot of customizations for these backdrops and they do more than just backdrops. They do a lot of, well, they do, I think they have 3,000 different backdrops, ranging from literally anything you can think of, seasonal, weddings, Easter, anything like that. You can get some rubber 
floor, like wood floor simulations, which is very cool. I know they even made those kind of things. They have a few accessories, like some actual backdrop stands and everything. Everything's extremely well priced. So if you're just, you know, just getting started out, especially if you're getting a home studio going, if you're going to be on location a lot, you want something portable that's not going to absolutely break you, I can highly recommend Cape Backdrops. At least from my experience here, I don't think you could do much better for the price. But again, a few things to watch out for. They're microfiber. They tend to be a little wrinkly when you get them out of the box. I put mine in the dryer. These were big backdrops, guys, uh, 8 by 14 feet. I would probably, looking back, maybe a 7 by 10 would have worked better since I ended up not putting them on my roller system. It would be a lot easier to just iron these out on low heat with just a regular iron if you had a smaller backdrop. You have these big ones like mine. I said I put them in the dryer. I would probably get a steamer, like a clothes steamer. Take that to it to really get those wrinkles out. Be careful of, like I said, putting a fan in front of them. Be careful of any kind of breeze going on. If they're not too taut, you can run into just a little bit of that wrinkling issue. I think you can actually see it on a couple more of these. Yeah, you can see that wrinkle. That's from the fan. It's not an actual wrinkle from the shipping. So just be aware. Anyway, head over to Cape Backdrops. Check them out. They have literally a ton of stuff, over 3,000 backdrops and all kinds of other things, folks. I highly recommend. I'm not affiliated with them or anything, so they're not paying me to say that. I just think it's a pretty good product that they're putting out there for you. As always, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about the backdrops. I'll try to help you. Uh, any questions about making these pictures, lighting, that kind of stuff. You know, I love talking about any and everything to do with photography. I'm Adam Welch, folks. And until next time... Thanks for being here.